Hey, it's David and Ross back for week two of our four-part series called Holy, Holy Crap, Crap, I'm Under, under Contract. contract. Uh, now, in this week, we're going to get into, is this still the one? So we've done most of our due diligence last week. You guys did your inspection. Um, so now what we really want to do is get into what issues did we find, right? Did the inspector find anything crazy? Did they... Mm -hmm. Find some holes in the roof. Was there cracks in the wall? Hopefully not. Were there any other issues that came up that would either bring hesitation or just that you think would need to get fixed, right? right? Some houses don't have any issues though, right? It, totally, yeah. There's houses that are in pristine yeah. condition. Um, there's They're other taken houses. Taken care of really well. Yeah, really okay. well maintained, great home ownership. And some of it's not even due to um, negligence or bad home ownership. It's just the age of the home, right? In, in Colorado, mm -hmm. especially in, in some of the older Denver neighborhoods, you're getting homes that are built in 1950. Right. I mean, just time alone will kind of introduce kind of maintenance issues. Sure. Right? Uh, so like I said, at this point, week two is really focused on getting the resolution settled. We're gonna kind of deal with the sellers, identify any, any kind of objections that you want, agree on kind of what that resolution is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and typically what that looks like these days is uh, usually some type of seller credit, right? The seller, they're moving on, they want to be done. They don't necessarily want to spend time to fix anything. They don't want to call the plumber or call the general handyman and, and come out and fix things. So they'd rather just kind of give you the money yep. and, let, and let you fix it how you see fit. Totally, so they're okay. gonna say, hey, we don't have the time, but we'll give you the money. We, we agree that it, it's right for it to be fixed. Okay. As the buyer, we typically say, that's fine, like, cause I wanna, I wanna be more involved in any way. I wanna be sure it gets done right. You wanna choose the person who does exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Yep. The appraisal is probably gonna get completed near the end of this week, mm -hmm. uh, which is an important step. Uh, and then we're gonna get our title docs back, right? Right. The title docs are important. They're not fun to read cause trust me when I tell you that they're very dry. Yeah. These are important. Well, they were written by lawyers, right? Well, there you go. <laughs> but the they're gonna make sure that you can buy this home outright, that right. you can give them a loan to purchase it. So I don't think a lot of people know exactly what title insurance is. Like, why do you need it? Like, why do you yep. have to have it? So, great question, and we always talk about this with our buyers, is you wanna make sure that two and a half years down the road, mm -hmm. you're sitting on your couch and your phone rings and someone says, hey, is this David? And you're like, yes it is. Hey, this is Tom. Um, so you, you, the house you own, I still own part of it mm. and your world falls apart. Right. Like, what do you mean? I, I paid for this house. I got a loan. Ross gave yeah. me money. David right. signed the contract. How is that possible? Uh, title insurance prevents that from happening. No one can come back and say, hey, I still own part of your house. Okay. And so they're, the part of the title company's job is to is to a search, yep. a title search is to look around and see if there's any other owners yep. of that property. Totally. And then just in case they miss something, yep. it's like any other insurance, it's there for kind of like a just in case, yep. right? Exactly. Well, that's really cool. It sounds like something we, like everybody should have. Yes. So in Colorado, who pays for that? We have the sellers pay for that. Okay. We kind of feel like it's their obligation to provide a house that's able to be purchased outright. Yep. Uh, it's not, a, it's not a, a large fee. So I think people get caught up and they think, oh, it's another fee. Mm -hmm. In general, it's not that expensive. So it generally doesn't hold up the transaction. Right. And on the, on the loan side of things, you know, when we see it from that standpoint, you are, I, I see the same thing. It's incredibly rare um, that the seller doesn't pay for yep. it. Now, interesting enough, what we're talking about title insurance is that the lender also needs insurance. Mm -hmm. Because if a problem does arise, you're protected by that policy. It's, they want their money. But the lender, is not, <laughs> the lender is not protected. So you have to have um, another separate policy for that. Yeah. But that one's even cheaper. That one's, um, um, even though the seller pays for uh, the owner's title policy, um, typically the customer, the borrower, um, pays for it. The lenders won, but that they they they're pretty inexpensive. They run like four hundred or five hundred dollars. Right. So now, um, assuming we've made it through resolution, everyone's kind of in agreement with what that looks like. Appraisal is going to get done at some point this this week. Now mm -hmm. we kind of look ahead a little bit, right? We tell our buyers, you know, you probably want to shop your homeowner's insurance. You want to make sure that you get the right coverage for the right price. Another right. piece that we're having them do at this point is just call some movers, right? We want to get on a, a mover schedule. They because get busy, right? They get, they get busy, booked up too. Especially right. from a seasonal perspective, if you're buying, you know, in the, the summer, the market, yeah, you know, the chances of a moving company being booked on the Saturday that you want is pretty high. Yeah. So on a real estate side, that's kind of what's happening on our end. How about you? You know, um, in week two, in on the mortgage side of things, is pretty quiet, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so because there was that 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 huge flurry of activity that we did in week one that we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we do with the customer right up front. Now, once we collect all that stuff and get it submitted in the first week, that's when we're doing a lot of things behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so we are we are reaching out to your employer to make sure that you actually work where you say you work. Um, we are reaching out to see if the income is what we expect it to be. We are contacting the IRS to double check, you know, that the tax documents you gave us, the W-2s, the tax returns are in fact what you filed. Um, with today's, you know, uh, you know, accounting software, I can fabricate a, a tax return to look like anything. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, to look however I want it to look. Um, the, so that doesn't mean that's actually what you put on file. Right. So um, there are all of those double checks we're doing. We're reaching out to the Social Security Administration, you know, to make sure that uh, there's not a fraud alert um, on your Social Security number, or that it shows the person's deceased. I've I've run across that before, mm -hmm. and that's when we got to kind of pump the brakes and find out what's going on. Sometimes it's just an honest mistake. Um, other times it's it's something more serious that we have to investigate. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we're, we've ordered the appraisal, um, you know, and we're, we're getting that underway. Uh, my team has, has uh, ordered the insurance um, so that we can get the insurance uh, rolling. Mm -hmm. the, title, the title work, we get copies of all that title work too, yeah. um, because not only does your customer want to review them, we want to review yeah. them. We want to make sure there's no um, issues with, this, with the new person owning the house free and clear, yeah. because that's the collateral, uh, yeah. you know, for the mortgage. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes in, in week two. So you won't hear from us a lot um, in week two. Please don't think that something's wrong, yeah. right? You know, um, the less to hear from you, the better. To yeah, celebrate. probably <laughs> actually, yeah, um, because in that in that in this second week, there's not there's there's not a, of interaction with with um, the customer and us. Not not to say that we won't reach out and tell you what's going on, yeah. um, but it's just it's nothing like that first week because um, we're doing a lot of things behind the scenes in preparation for what you're gonna see in week three. Um, that's when everything has come back to us. That's when we know what the new round of things are that we need to work on that I mentioned way back in week one. Yep. All right, so that wraps up week two. Hopefully this information has been helpful. Join us next week for week three, The Home Stretch. <laughs>